All right, so you're looking to get a gaming PC and you're just not sure if you should build or buy a, a PC, maybe even a mini PC, because those are getting really fast these days. And now we've got something that's kind of strange and interesting from AO Star. This is the AO Star Gods! AMD Ryzen 7 7435H. What is, what's the name of it? Just the Gods? All right, well, it's got the Ryzen 7 7435HS, which is not a crazy CPU, but that's not what you're getting this for. You're getting it because it has a cut down version of the Radeon RX. 6600. It's got the 6600 LE all in a compact case right here. See this AO Star case? This is a mini PC because that CPU, that's a mini CPU or a laptop CPU, but this is a desktop ish graphics card. Before we do that, look at all my beautiful games. This is my PC game collection, but it's also a whole bunch of shirts that I'm going to be doing for 80, I don't know, 70, 80% off. Also, the hardware and the mouse pads. Use coupon code Happy Hardware and you'll get 50% off that. I'm trying to clear up the shelves as much as possible. Now, these prices are only going to be for the stuff I have here on the shelf. There's a few things that are print on demand, like this one. Those prices will not be changing, but you can go on there and grab just all kinds of t-shirts. I got all kinds of good stuff left over there. I want more room for my games. Now you're gonna have to pay a little bit of shipping, but if you grab multiple things, maybe some hardware, maybe some of these, well, that's gonna help a lot. Also, I've got a bunch of games I'm not taking with me and some of them I've just got duplicates of. They're actually really good games. So I'll throw some of those into the boxes. If you order a few things and there's extra room in the box and it doesn't like, you know, cost me an extra several dollars, I'll throw some games in there. So I'll be giving away that. And I'm also going to be giving away random just stuff from the office that I don't need, little bits of hardware. And then the more premium hardware, I'm gonna put on the used category over here. If you just come to epicpants.com and scroll down the page about halfway, you'll see there's a, a used category. I got microphones, handheld consoles, got a few copies of Windows on here. Look at that Windows 98 sealed in the box. The idea is I take care of you with some good sale prices and you take care of me by getting this stuff off my shelf so I have a little more room. Head over to epicpants.com and now on to our regularly scheduled program. Like I said, a cut down version. It's almost as fast as the desktop variety of the 6600 LE. And yes, the 6600 is still relevant in 2025 because most of the games, as you're going to see when I do my tests, running at 1080p run beautifully well on high or sometimes even ultra. If you want to run 1440p games, go do it on high. That's fine. So you can do a lot with this. Now, I'm also going to talk about this versus building your own with almost like exactly the same performance. And we'll see if this is less expensive or if that's less expensive. But first, I'm just going to go through and take a look at this thing. And we've got our colored ports on the front right there, the red and green to show the microphone. And it's kind of, it kind of feels retro when you see the microphone and the headphone jack in red and green. Ain't it? Anyway, you'll notice that the case is kind of open air. You've got some big torque screw size things on the side, but this feels like a kind of a modder's case from back in the day. A lot of air is going to go through here. You ain't got no dust filters either, so you can get some dust in there if that's okay with you. If you're going to keep it on your desk, probably less dust than if you put it in the floor, but I would keep a dust canister or an air canister beside this. It's probably fine, but you know, once every few months, just that's how you do it. Don't touch it with a vacuum cleaner, you idiot. You're liable to suck a capacitor off. I had a friend do that once, bumped it with the nozzle of the vat and sucked a capacitor out. Anyway, the AMD Ryzen 7 7435HS is more than most of y'all need. What are you doing? It's eight cores, 4.5 gigahertz is the max boost, and we got 16 threads. This is Zen 3 architecture, so this is not the newest, newest technology. That's how they keep the price so low. It's six nanometer technology, yes. It supports dual channel DDR5, and I've got the bare bones unit. They, they gave me one stick of, uh, of memory, but I'm gonna add more in there. They gave me one 16 gigabyte stick of memory. They say it supports up to 4,800 megahertz memory. I've got 5,600 in there, it's working fine. You got two M.2 slots on this and it'll support up to two terabytes. Right, let's take a look at their Glacier Gaming. I'm not taking apart that side of the machine because I wanna leave it alone. I wanna leave the heat sinks and everything alone, but here's their Glacier Gaming 3.0. They always have to have a ridiculous name like that. So we do have a nice big heatsink over there keeping the GPU and the CPU cool. Bafflingly, with this powerful GPU, we only have two outputs for video, HDMI and a display port. The USB does not support uh, display. So that's a big head scratcher right there. Like what's going on? Why two? Seriously? Did you have to saw the other ones off? Or maybe that's part of the LE on the 6600 LE. Yeah. So on the front there, we've got our USB 4. Ooh, nice. 
fancy little power button and glows up if you like it and then you got your microphone and your headphone separated which is cool if you ask me then you got a little reset button there you got to press it with a pen or something and another usb type a that is 3.2 you get four gen 1 and four gen 2 on this in total so just yeah. On the back, we have two 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports right beside the paltry two display <laughs> outputs that we get. I'm going to yell and scream about that. Yes. Then we have four USB type A ports. We also have microphone and headphone on the back and another USB 4. So since this is a slightly bigger case, they're able to, you know, push it all the way up to the full 100 watt power design. So that's kind of cool. So let's talk about the 660 LE. It's 8 gigabytes. The boost is all the way up to 2495. You got 1792 stream processors and it can use up to 100 watts of power. So this is no joke, real GPU. And you'll see in the test, it's, you know, faster than every mini PC out there, except for maybe one that also has a 6600 thing. Okay, let's hop in and just test it out, shall we? And see how fast this is. All right, the first game I want to try out is No Rest for the Wicked, The Breach Refi. How many, how, how long of a name do we need? What is this, uh, it's a Kai. Anyway, this is the new game from the creators of Ori and the Blind Forest. And you get to play this gorilla looking character. Why do they have arms so long? I'm just going to show you the gameplay. I'm not really going to get into the story and all that because I haven't gotten far enough into the game. All I know is something weird's happening and turning people into these giant mutant monsters. I really like the way the camera looks in this. Let's just... I guess I'm gonna have to... I, my cloud saves didn't work, so this is annoying. I think it's the law that every game must start with a, a shipwreck, right? Especially if it's an old action game that wants to feel tough and rough and all that. So let's go ahead and get our sword going. I haven't played long enough to decide if it's a Souls-like or not, but the combat certainly feels like it. I think the worlds look really pretty, and I kind of like the camera angles on this. Look how pretty this is. This is ridiculous! I mean, it's a game from the same people who made Ori and the Blind Forest, so of course it's going to be beautiful, but this one's quite a bit more brutal. Still has kind of cartoony graphics. All right, we're going to take a look at the FPS now that we're up here on deck and there's all kinds of stuff going on. I'll show you what I'm running here, 1080p. And it looks like we can turn up the graphics. There's not a lot of, uh, I guess, options here when it comes to graphics, but I'm just going to go ahead and go on best quality. There we go. It's forcing me to have upscaling, it looks like. No, I'm just going to put it on quality upscaling and then I'm going to use the transformer model, which is a little bit sharper. So this is going to require more processing power. But yeah, it's not letting me. So it looks good. It's running in the 70s on this machine with the highest quality settings I could muster and even turning that up some. This feels really good. I'm, I'd say the combat feels at least as good as Dark Souls. <laughs> I don't really like the combat in those games all that much. It's got the same weightiness and everything, if you know what I mean. All right, that's enough. You get the idea, it's cool. I'm, I, I would show you the regular game, but yeah, I just wanna make sure it works. So I've never tried Alan Wake 2 on a mini PC. I'm gonna be running this on medium and I'll show you the other settings I've got here. Film grain, lens distortion, all that stuff's on, but I'm using FSR 2, running at 1080p native, and I turned off motion blur because I hate it. So yeah, obviously not doing path trace lighting, but yeah, maybe I'll try low. As far as ray tracing, it's probably not going to work. All right, I'm probably a bad idea to put on ray tracing. Let's not. Okay, now we're in the 30s without ray tracing. can't believe I'm playing Alan Wake 2 on a mini PC, and it looks good. looks really good. Let's go outside and see how it runs. All right, we're in the 30s. I'll do a benchmark once we get outside, running it just basically on pure medium. There we go. And we're outside. Just walk through the town here. This looks great, running at 46, 47. How many games look this good on medium? Tell me. Still run 43. Let's see how the reflections look inside the shop over here. Look pretty good. I mean, I do miss the ray tracing, but we still got some reflections right there. As far as the benchmark goes, it says we got 45 FPS right there. And you can see the 1% low was dropping down in the 15 area. So you will feel a bit of a stutter here and there, but for a game like this, I don't think that's a massive deal. And the minimum 36.3, so pretty good. All right, let's take a look at Baldur's Gate 3, running it at 1080p, and then down here, I'm gonna put this on high. Oh yeah, 80 FPS on high, this is great. 86, uh, better than expected even. And I'm not even using FSR, I don't even need it. If I don't need FSR, I'm not gonna use it. So let's do a benchmark here on the high setting, just see how it runs. This is silky smooth, all right. You know what? Maybe you also want to see it on Ultra. Let's do it. 
I'm still in the 80s. This is great. Beastly performance. 70s, 90. Uh, yeah, this is crazy playable. So I'd probably play this on high. And the reason is, is because once you get into the cities and stuff where there's tons of people around, it might become a little bit difficult, you know, with all the different stuff going on. Here in the Underdark, we're doing just fine on Ultra. So, I mean, if you really wanted to, you know, mess with the settings and change back and forth between Ultra and High, depending on what part of the game you're in, by all means. But if you just want to, like, you know, have set it on one thing and have it always work, just put it on High. It'll run great. And our benchmark there, 83.1 FPS, 1% low, 70.6. It's going to feel really smooth. All right, we're going to try ray tracing low, just to see if we can do any ray tracing on this. Don't know how this is going to run, so... Let's check. Cyberpunk 2077, by the way. What? I did not expect this to get 58.74 FPS with the ray tracing low setting turned on. Uh, yes, the minimum was also 53.8, meaning that it is a very consistent FPS. It's going to feel great to play. Um, let's try it on some different settings. I'm just also going to try high. Why not? Not ray tracing high, but you know, just high. Let's just try ultra. Why not? All right. So if we turn off ray tracing and run this on the ultra setting, I think it looks really good. Uh, arguably. All right. So if we turn off ray tracing and run this on the ultra setting, we still have our XE. We still have our AMD Fidelity FX 2.1 going on set on the quality setting. We're getting 73.14 FPS with a minimum of 60.87. So this thing came to game. Doom the Dark Ages. It's running surprisingly well. I'm playing this on the high setting right now, and yet it's running really well, as a matter of fact. On the high setting, we're getting 59.6 FPS, and the maximum FPS was 69. The minimum was 51.4, so very consistent as well. Take a look at the 1% lows, 49.5. I think this is going to feel plenty smooth. A game like this, I wouldn't really want to play uh, much higher than high because you do want a very, very buttery smooth FPS because it's a, you know, Twitch-based combat action game. All right, and I also, you know, medium looks awesome. We still got ray tracing, as you can see right there. Let's try this out. All right, so on medium, we got an extra five FPS, so not a big deal. The main thing is the 1% lows, 54.4 versus 49.5. I think both of these are going to feel very similar. So just, you know, figure out if you want 65 FPS or 59 FPS. I'll probably play it on high because, you know, 1% low of 49 is going to feel pretty similar to 54. All right, let's look at Unigen Valley. That's what I like to see, 181.5 FPS. The score is 75.95. We're running this on 1080p high in case you want to play along at home. Minimum, never drop below 49.6. So looking pretty good with that nice GPU in there. And our superposition score is also looking really nice. Running it at 1080p on the medium setting, 97.41 on average, minimum 70.91. Total score 13,023. So let me know what you got at home if you're testing your own system to see how much slower it is or faster. All right, let's take a look at Cinebench. Now, remember, this is a 7435HS, so it's not like as crazy as some of the other mini PCs that we've seen when it comes to just pure CPU power. Eight core, 16 threads. This is a Ryzen 7, but it's not like the top of the line Ryzen 7. So for the single core, we're looking at 1487. And then over here on the multi-core score, we have 13024. And you can see where it stacks up right there. It is faster than a lot of the Intel parts, but you need to note that this is a few generations old. Let's have a look at our Geekbench score. Single core, 2,027. Multi-core, 10,383. Let's scroll down and take a look at all of the individual scores here. You can pause if you want to see anything. Thing looking pretty good. Look at those clines. All right, OpenCL score, and look at that. That's huge, 73,053. And I'll scroll down. There are the individual scores again. Let's take a quick tour of the BIOS and just see what we can do in here. So here's our first page, Tian Bay, uh, the product name Gods. <laughs> yes, you get all your information right there. There's the Ryzen 7 7435HS, 32 gigabytes of memory that I've put in there running at 4800 megahertz. So that memory is 5600, so I'm not sure if I can move that around or whatever. 
but there's our TPM. I'm not gonna go through everything, but all right, here's our fan settings. You can come in here and looks like we can uh, go ahead and mess with our fans a little bit. I'm not gonna do that right at the moment, but yeah, if you wanted to create your own, I don't know if full on fan curve or not, but uh, yeah. CPU configuration, IDE, how about that? PCI, IE subsystems. We've got our resizable bar enabled and above four gigabytes uh, decoding is enabled as well. That's all I really care about right now. There's our PCI Express hot plug. Don't need to worry about that really, our PCI hot plug. USB, standard stuff, network stack is on. And here's information for both of our Intel 2.5 gigabit ethernet adapters. They're both the i226V. It's funny, in Windows 11 LTSC, I actually had to go find a driver for those things. It didn't just work out of the box, but you know, it's very streamlined. Oh, check this out. We can change the color of our breathing LED on this. So let's see here. I like it breathing and then we'll put it on, got purple. No, how about, I'll just do multicolor. Why not? I'd probably put it on blue if I was keeping it. I'd probably put it on, probably put it on blue if I'm actually gonna. This one right now with the way I got it, you know, I got it, no RAM, no SSD, 549 bucks. Then you grab your own RAM and your own SSD. Now, if I went over to PC Part Picker and build something that was somewhat similar, this CPU is a bit, probably gonna be a bit faster, but you know, you can get a rise, you can get like a 5700X for a little bit lower price. Anyway, very similar price. And I didn't put an M.2 or, um, you know, RAM in this, in this list because we, you know, we're getting a bare bone. Very similar price. Now, the difference here is, I can't believe how cheap this is. I also found this, this is a very, very good deal on Newegg right now. This RX 6600, this is gonna be a little bit faster, just a little bit, and you're gonna get four outputs. So that's the difference is if you build your own, you can do so for a little bit more money. It's gonna be a bigger system. It's gonna be a little bit faster. You know, like I went with this, this is a reasonably sized case. I mean, this is actually gonna be, okay, but like eight or 10 times bigger. So yeah, this is just for the money. You know, it's less money. Than, than building yourself. But to be fair, if I went with totally different specs and totally different parts, I could probably build something faster for 550 bucks, maybe. But it's gonna be a lot bigger, like a lot bigger. It's gonna have more video outputs. I'm gonna keep yelling about that. Two is just stupid. Like, what do you think you're gonna you do with two outputs? I need, I, I can't, I won't even get out of bed without six uh, monitors hooked up. Okay, it's, two is probably enough for most people, but I'm still going to complain about it because what if you want to do other things? I don't know, hook up something else. Little screens on the side to run your your favorite media player. I don't know. Not that big of a deal for some people, but for me, I use a lot of monitors, but uh, you know, whatever. I'm making a big deal of it. Probably not a big deal for 99% of the people out there. So the other thing I want to talk about is this open shell case because... Let's go over to Minis Forum real quick. What the shit's going on here? There's stupid AI thing to load. Get out of my... F All right, so let's take a look at this. This is the Neptune from Minis Forum. It's very similar in size, but it's 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 got a better seal on it. So it's not going to get dust on the inside. It's also quieter. As far as the speed goes, it's really similar. Like really, really similar in speed. I mean, I just... I do like the fact that this one's a fully closed unit, but I think we might have more options over here. When it comes to like the this has got like an older cpu well they both got old cpus if you can even find this one anymore so yes anyway I've, I've scrutinized this thing enough it's it's fast it's really good like i can't even believe how fast some of the games are on this tiny little thing and how many games i was playing uh, at really high you know frame rates that are like you know triple a games i don't know what people call them anymore i'm tired that's the end of the video i hope it gave you enough information this has been a really nice, you know, mini PC for me. I would like to see a version of this that doesn't have holes all over it. So I could just leave it on my desk and not worry about dust getting in there. But it is pretty, you know, it is, it, look at it, it's sexy. And this GPU is completely relevant. So yeah, I'll see you on epicpants.com. Bye everybody. The Ryzen 7, 74, 35 HS. God, hold on. Hail coffee, you all. Drink coffee in the middle of the night, keep your parents awake. Mm -hmm.